Hi gang! In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a shearling pattern fill. And if you're new here, please take a minute to subscribe before we get started. To make this pattern, we're going to need to start in Photoshop. So I'm going to open a file that is 3 inches wide by 3 inches high with a resolution of 300 pixels. And we're going to click Create. Now we can go ahead and create our shearling fill. Now, luckily, we can do this with just Photoshop filters. We don't need to go hunting for any kind of artwork. We're going to go up to Filter, Filter Gallery, and the filter we're going to use is the sponge filter. The settings that I like are brush size of 5, definition 8, and smoothness 7. And that's it. We're going to click OK. And this is our pattern. It makes really nice kind of curvy blobs that give the great appearance of shearling. Now the one thing we have to do for this before we bring it into Illustrator is to make sure that it is seamless. So we're going to go up to Filter, Other, Offset. Now the offset filter, we want to start at zero. So if yours isn't, you're going to go ahead and zero it out. And what we're going to do is click in the upper left hand corner and drag down to the middle. And what that's going to do is offset the file so that you get a seam going straight down the center and straight across the center. And we're going to fix that now that it's visible on the screen. So I'm going to click OK. We're going to go over to the tools and grab the spot healing brush tool. And for this, mine is currently, my brush is set at 70. It's everything else is standard. I haven't messed with the fill. My hardness though is at 72%. All right. What I'm going to do is click right on the top of the seam, hold my shift key and click down at the bottom of the seam. And that is going to clean up that seam straight down the center. We're going to do the same thing horizontally. Click on one end of the seam, hold my shift key, and click on the other end and let the brush do its job. Now that we have a seamless repeat, we can bring it to Illustrator. So we'll go ahead and select the whole thing. Going to copy it, Command or Control C. So now let's open up Illustrator and paste, Control or Command V. Now we need to image trace. You're going to go up to image trace with the swatch selected. And rather than just clicking on the button, we're going to click on the little arrow next to it and select high fidelity photo and let it do its thing. Once it's done doing the image trace, you're going to go up and click this button for expand. And that's it. Now you can select it and drag it right into the swatches panel and you can see it added it into the swatches. Now you'll notice the color is different. I'm going to show you how to color it in just a moment. But let's first apply it to our flat. I've got this flat here and we can zoom in a bit. And let's go ahead and first let's change the edges of this to a shearling brush. Uh, I made it in a previous video so if you'd like to see how we do it you can go ahead and I will leave a link at the end of this video. I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to open up my brushes and click on the shirling brush I created. So now we have a shirling looking flat. We can go ahead and fill it. I'm going to select all the areas that need filling. And a quick way to do that is to select one of them. Go up to select, same, and we're going to select um, appearance, which means it's going to select every other piece that has the same appearance, which means a white fill and this brush. Now we can go to swatches, make sure we're in fill, and apply the new swatch that we just created. The swatch can also be scaled. You do that by selecting it, double clicking on the scale tool, making sure that Scale Strokes and Effects is turned off and Transformed Objects is turned off. Click OK. Usually nothing happens when you do that the first time. Now we are going to select it again, go back to my Scale tool, and this time when we type in 50%, it should apply itself. We could turn Preview off. There we go. And back on, and there is our Scale Down swatch at 50%. 
And if we want to match it to the others, we can go ahead and select the other pieces. We can use the eyedropper, shortcut key I, and click on the one we scaled to make everything match. I like making my fills in this nice neutral gray because sometimes you need your flats to stay in black and white. But if you do want to color it, all you need to do with it selected is to go up here and click on the recolor art icon. It's this little pinwheel circle in grayscale. We're going to click on it to open the window. Now I've got mine set to advanced. When yours opens up, it is probably going to look like this. It is not my preference. I like to use this other version. Um, which is a sign and I have this little check mark check that says open advanced recolor on launch so it will always open this particular version and not the other one but if you're in the wrong one you're just gonna click on this little icon now you'll notice there's a lot of shades of gray here and we don't need to worry about all of them we're gonna go up to the colors section and drop down here and change it from auto to one and this is gonna make our life so much easier now we're going to double click on this and change the swatch to whatever color we want our sweater to be. Since it's a Shirley, I'm going to go ahead and pick a nice kind of warm color. Let's make something maybe a little bit warmer than the other one I did. And click OK. And that is going to apply it to all of the different versions of the shade. And if you click on this little button here, you can see why it's doing that. There's different options for how the color can be applied. It can be applied exactly, you can preserve tints, or you can scale the tints. And that's the one that we're doing, which is giving us all of this nice variation. So if you like the color the way it is, you can just go ahead with it. If you're not in love with the color, you can go down to these hue, saturation, and brightness sliders and adjust them. If you want it to be darker or lighter, you can play around with the brightness slider but I kind of like the light color. I can saturate the color more if I want something more intense, or I can change the hue to something completely different. I can over dye fabric, but we're gonna go back to where we started and let's just keep this at the lower saturation. I'm gonna click okay. Now you'll notice not only did it change the color of the pieces I had selected, it also added a new version of my swatch in the swatches panel with the changed color. So if I want to use it in the future, all I need to do is click on a path and click on my fill. And now you can see that not only did it change the color of the pieces I had selected, but it also added another swatch to my swatches panel that is in my new recolored version. So if I want to use it in the future, all I need to do is click on a path and fill it with the new color. And that's it. That's how you can easily create a seamless shearling pattern in Photoshop and then bring it on into Illustrator. If you learned something new, please give the video a like. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comments below. See you next time.